Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a full review on the McGruin, McGurin Flix. Sorry about that. Um, McGurin or perhaps um, AM8 or AM8 knives. It's it's branded both ways. Uh, I feel like they all must be made by the same company. Maybe it's a, a subdivision or something like that. Doesn't really matter. All I will say is this. Um, I follow McGruin knives on Instagram and I saw this knife on their on their Instagram feed and really, really liked it. So I thought to myself, man, I'd really like to get my hands on that knife. But yeah, you know how it goes, guys. You, you can sort of pay attention for a while. And um, eventually it popped up on White Mountain Knives and uh, I touched base with Justin, was able to get my hands on one. And I have to say, you know, I don't always buy knives on, on looks alone. And I was a little, a little hesitant because this is the first time I've had a knife from uh, McGrew and Knives, and you know how it goes. You can sometimes be like, ah, you know, this is a new company. Uh, are they going to do a good job? Are there issues here? But uh, this particular knife anyway, and really the other McGruins that I've, you know, I went ahead and found some other reviews of people talking about their knives. They seem generally speaking to be pretty well done. And certainly this one is quite nice. Um, a lot of things I like about this knife, I don't like every single thing. And there are a couple little nitpicks that I'm going to share with you along the way. But let's go ahead and get into the particulars. Eight and three eighths overall, three and a half inches on the blade, four and 13 sixteenths when closed. Okay, so that's a little over four and three quarters. This is not a small knife. Uh, for grip area, we've got three and three quarters down here. Plus, we have this choil that you can choke up into if you need to or want to. And the weight on this is 4.7 ounces, which given the titanium frame lock construction, I guess titanium bolster lock construction, is not that bad at all. All right. In terms of what this knife has going for it, things that I like, things that I dislike. Let's start with the blade as we usually do. Blade is M390 steel, nicely designed, sort of a standard drop point blade here, top swedge, flat grind. The only real thing I can complain about is, see how they, they've polished this edge, which is a nice touch and it does improve performance. But notice how there's a bit of a, a an abrasive mark left on the blade from that polishing job that they did on the edge. Not a huge deal, certainly not something I'm gonna, you know, detract points for or whatever, um, but it's noticeable and so I wanted to mention it. Now, having said that, the, the blade did come with a very nice edge. It still has a very nice edge on it. It's M390 steel, so I haven't I actually haven't had to sharpen this. I've stropped it a couple times, but that's about it. Uh, still pristine, you know, very, very nice, nice edge and that's typical of m390 performance um the flat grind means you know and it's a moderately you know it's not super thick blade stock it's you know around an eighth of an inch but the flat grind means that this is not like the sliciest of all knives in existence but it's definitely not bad and everything i've had to use it for more than adequate all right um again when when i look for an edc knife i want balance more so than you know just slicing power and this has done a this is is pretty well done. All right, moving over to the action. Let me first say, uh, very, very smooth. Look at that. Uh, it is, of course, on bearings. It's a front flipper, or it has this little slot in the blade, so you can spidey flick it. That's a really nice touch. And, you know, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of front flippers, so I probably wouldn't like this knife quite as much as I do if it just had the front flipper. But having both is actually very, very welcome. And I do enjoy that quite a bit. Although I, I do find myself, you know, front flipping this knife from time to time. You can also sort of do a slow roll with it. If you, you know, if you're in an environment where you don't really want to be popping your blade out uh, dramatically, okay, if you don't want this kind of thing, uh, you can roll this out pretty slowly. Now, one complaint I do have, and that is the detent is a little soft. I could see that this detent could be just a little harder. Um, it's still functional. So that's the main, right? When a detent gets too, too soft, you can't properly deploy the blade. And and that's not the problem. And I've never had this fall open or anything like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I don't think, hold on, let me go off camera. Um, so off camera, if I give it quite a, you know, if I give it quite a flick, I can get it to open, but it's, it's not a big problem, let's put it that way. So um, while I would like to see this detent a little harder, um, that I'm gonna, you know, that's a bit of an issue for me. It's not bad, okay? 
So action, very smooth, very accessible, very enjoyable if you're one of those uh, guys likes to fidget with your knife, which is certainly, you know, I find myself doing that type of thing. Very satisfying spider flick. Uh, on this knife and I think that's probably why that they softened up that detent a little um, but I, I think it could still anyway it would still work even if it a little harder uh, otherwise very smooth very comfortable everything you know in terms of action that way is quite good um, moving on to the design and the handle construction really really attractive knife guys at least for you know the 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 overall design is beautiful and when you start getting close and looking at the details it remains very very impressive it's going to be a little tough to see here probably easier to notice on the pocket clip this has a bit of an this has an orange peel finish which is really really nicely done and that's not something we typically see on you know sort of production knives um, I mean, it, you know, there are some out there, but it's not something you see every day for sure. And so the, the orange peel finish is very, very nice. The carbon fiber is, uh, you know, sort of forged or, or marble carbon fiber. Really, really nice. Again, not too many voids. I think, hold on, if you get, if I caught the light right way, th there's kind of a void-ish looking thing right here, but it's not noted, not bad at all. Um, one of the things I do when I see what might be a void, I kind of rub my fingers over it to see if it's it's a real issue. And there's nothing here. This carbon fiber is pretty nice. I'm not in love with the gold pivot screw, pivot collar still. I would have been much happier if this was just left with the blue. That's not what they did. Um, obviously visible hardware you know you could you could turn that around and put it in from the inside and that would be maybe a, a slightly classier touch but as this is it's absolutely fine um, so that's a quick rundown of the the materials choices and the way they're put together there's no internal milling and that's because the milling is to uh, allow for these carbon fiber scales which are really nice and finally when we get to ergonomics it is really, really good. This knife feels great in hand. Has that option to choke up if you want the, the extra little bit of control. Um, but wow, yeah, it just feels really, really good. Very comfortable knife. Um, you know, I, I don't plan to go out and buy a bunch of McGruin knives, but, you know, certainly at least from this, you know, this design is so compelling. Uh, such a such a gorgeous knife and and it's really really well put together there's not much that i can complain about um in terms of comparisons i don't have a whole lot um you know they're they're you know i'll throw in a zero tolerance just because you know that's a titanium frame lock that is quite popular this of course is the 0308 but there would be others that would be perhaps more similar to this um, when it comes to knives that sort of emphasize design a little bit more, you know, we could throw in the Spyderco Swayback, which uh, is going to cost considerably more, all right, but have sort of that that classy feel to it that this also has. Um, and, uh, you know, I think this is a good example of sort of class and utility kind of tied together. Um, we've also got the, whoops, sorry about that. We've also got the Mass Drop Crux and the Tucson TS 49. Uh, these would be, you know, some other overseas produced knives, you know, um, uh, representing Wii knives and, uh, and Tucson knives. Uh, again, um, they're not super comparable because they're, they're smaller, but they do sort of tie in, you know, some higher end materials, classy looking knife, still well balanced in terms of utility. And they come in at a, at a pretty budget friendly price point. All right, let's get those out of the way. Bring this guy sort of back to center stage. Sorry about that drifting, guys. It's making me nuts too, but uh, I, I'm going to carry on. I think it's again, it's something going on with the uh, with the camera's stabilization feature. Um, overall, very very nice knife. You know, it's it's got these high end looks and high end features. Great materials, great finishes. Um, feels good in hand reasonable price point like this just really does a lot of things well uh, the only complaint that i could really offer here is that the detent is a little soft but it's not so soft that it, it, it impacts the functioning of the knife at all so even that's really not a fair criticism overall they've done a really really nice job with this and this is a pretty easy knife to recommend thanks a lot for watching don't forget to like and subscribe go check out white mountain knives i think justin still has some of these in stock so you could get one save yourself 10 percent with my discount code sharp stuff all right thanks we'll talk to you later